this section back here. And uh, this is our uh, family at the house right now. I never thought I'd have three, four kids uh, uh, again. I thought after I got them three, I, I was done. Uh, but the Lord seen fit to send more in. And uh, we praise the Lord. And uh, yeah, it was a while like yesterday evening. But anyway, you know, you know what this is? This is the Lord making a way for you. You know what your church is? That's the Lord making a way for you. And that's, that's what this little song is. It says, Jesus, he's a way maker. And I don't know what you're going through this morning, but he'll, he'll make a way for you if you'll let him. Amen. All right, we didn't even practice. They didn't know he's singing until we got here this morning. Me and Jaden. But all right, here we go. Ready? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do you a little introduction. in here this morning and enjoy the Lord. I'm going to do something a little bit different. Take your Bible and turn to uh, Matthew chapter 2 and I want to look at some scripture here. That's Christmas preaching uh, scripture but I, I'm not going to preach on Christmas this morning uh, but I am going to use that scripture today as a thought. So uh, turn to Matthew chapter 2 and in Matthew chapter 2 there it's about uh, King Herod when Jesus was born. And he was trying to destroy the baby Jesus. Y'all know that story very well. You should. And uh, I know it would be a, a help to you this morning. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about kids and how kids are being uh, treated today. They are at the bottom of the barrel, people. And I preached along these lines at the camp meeting. And I still haven't been able to get it off my heart. I've always cared about kids. My my two heaviest burdens for people are kids and drunks. And uh, my dad drank for a long time. It's bad. And every time I see somebody drunk, it just breaks my heart. And then I think about kids. And the reason I think about kids is because many times they have no way to defend themselves. And they're helpless in many cases. And so this morning, I want you to look at Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13. When they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child, that's the baby Jesus, and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou, thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek 
the young child to destroy him. Now, Herod in that scripture is a type of Satan, of the devil. And it said he would seek that young child to destroy him. And there is no doubt in my mind that's a picture of Satan will seek a young child to destroy them. All you parents in here this morning, I'm telling you, you have an enemy that is out to destroy your child. Every parent in here this morning, lend me your ear. You have a child growing up in a world to which there's never been one like it is today. Never. Not even 20 years ago. Ain't like it is today. You better take heed and you better be careful and you better raise that child of yours with more particular care than you do any of your work, any of your job, any hobby, anything like that. Your children. Your children. The Bible said children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. So if God's give you children, they are a gift from God to you. And he loans them to you for a while to raise them. Also, I want you to help me as we pray for our bus kids. Our bus kids. There's a gang of them here this morning. I'm telling you, it, it breaks my heart for them. It just breaks my heart for them. I don't believe there's ever been a time when the devil has had his guns pointed on a generation of young people like he has today. And I want to preach on that. The devil's main target. That's the title. The devil's main target. With all we've seen today, there's never been a time that it's harder for kids to come up being right than it is today. I'd like to say three things about kids this morning, and I want you to listen, especially your parents, and anybody who will help me with my burden for the bus ministry. Anybody. I want you to pray with me this morning and help me. I want to say three things about kids today. And when we run these buses up and down these roads, and we go knock on their doors, and, and we give them a tootsie roll, like we gave them yesterday, little bitty tootsie rolls, uh, and see their eyes light up, and then see them jump off of that bus on Sunday morning. There's way more to that than just meets the eye. Kids are human beings. They are people. I want to say three things about them this morning. Number one, kids are impressionable. Kids are extremely impressionable. They're like a sponge. Uh, whatever they are around, they soak it up. Isn't that right? Whatever a kid is around, they soak it up like a sponge. Now that puts responsibility on you as a parent. Whatever you put into them or allow to be put into them, it, that's what's going to be in them because they're like, a, they're like a, a, a blank disc or something. It's right, you're right on a disc like a CD, and you're writing on their mind and their heart and their conscience. A kid's a funny thing a lot of time because a daddy, a boy, will turn out just like his daddy or worse unless God does something for him. A girl will turn out just like her mother, or worse, unless God does something for them. I have a lot of traits of my daddy in me. I, I went down the same road my daddy went down, no doubt, if I hadn't have got saved. But thank God I got a lot of my mom in me too. And then there's something else in there that ain't neither one of them. And that's what a lot of parents don't understand a lot. They think, um, well, he's, he's half of you and half of me, so we'll just uh, no, you, you, you forget about something. He's part of you and part of your wife. And then there's another part in there. There ain't never been one like it. He's an individual, right? Ain't that right? They're all individuals. One of the things that amazes me is no matter how many kids you have, every one of them is different. They're similar in some ways. And, and I'll tell you something else. You parents have done figured this out. You, you get your first one and you figure out what works with them. And that second one comes along and it don't work with them. And the third one comes along, nothing don't work with them. And, and you, you think you're a genius when you got your first kid, and after a while you start thinking, I don't know nothing about this. Because they're an individual. They have a free will. They have their own, they have their own personality. They have their own, they're an individual like never has been on the earth and never will be again. Every individual person is different in some way. Now, they are, that being said, they're like a sponge. 
They pick up. You know how come people, kids in China, grow up speaking Chinese? They hear their mother and daddy saying it. Don't tell me it don't matter what you say around your kids. They pick up your accent. They pick up your slang. They pick up your ways of saying little words. I still say words right now that I, I heard my mom say growing up, and you don't even realize they're listening. You're, you're listening to them, and it's a part of Well, mom always said, you know, and even the way they said it, uh, a particular words or phrases. I've noticed it so many times. When we go to camp, when we go to camp, we'll take a bunch of kids to camp. And at camp, we have morning services and have play in the afternoon and night services. And it's Bible, 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 church, church, Bible, church, Bible, church. A little song like Jesus is a way maker, Jesus is a way maker, Jesus is a way maker. And you know what? On, on the way over to camp, the kids, they're sitting in the halfway back, and every one of them got something plugged in their ears, and they're like this, you know, and can't get them to sing enough. On the way home, they have a smile on their face. They're clapping their hands, saying, yeah, let's sing that song, Brother Danny. Let's sing that song, Brother Danny. Let's sing that song. You know why? Because that's what they've been exposed to all week long. And it reflects, it gets in them. And it gets in them. That's, that's why the world says they're brainwashed. They're not brainwashed. I mean, most of them are brainwashed by the world. Ain't that right? The world brainwashing them. We, we see a few get blood washed once in a while, but no, nobody's being brainwashed in the sense of a cultish mindset or some crazy something or another like that. But they do pick it up. They do pick it up. I've had parents tell me, I don't know what you did to him at camp, but he's preached to me ever since he's got home. And the parents get mad and don't like it. The kid comes home and says, Mama, you need to be in church. Daddy, you ought to be. And, and maybe they shouldn't do that, but it, it, they picked it up. Are you listening to me this morning? Kids, pick it up. Y'all hear me? Whatever you allow in your house, the music, the movies, the whatever, don't you think it's not getting in them. And a bad, bad music has a bad spirit in it, and that spirit will get in your child, and then when you can't do nothing with them one day, you wonder what happened. A lot of parents wonder why the river's poisoned when they drop the, the poison in it way back upstream somewhere. And they, they want it. They, they, uh, they, when they come home, they, I've had lots of, lots of time, lots of time. A mother come to me and said, Brother Danny, he made me go, uh, go to the, he, he made me go to the store and buy him a tie. He said, I want to dress like Brother Danny. I mean, little bitty boys, that big right there. You know why? They were exposed to it. One a barber told me, I, I got my hair cut here in Marion, and a guy, he said, one day this little boy come in here, he was about that eye, he said, he got up in the chair and he said, I want my hair cut like Brother Danny. And, uh, and uh, he said, he said uh, and, and you know what that means? You know what that means? That means whoever they're around, it has an impression on them. Now that puts a big responsibility on you as parents. Big, really big, really big. They're, whoever they're around, they, they'll, they'll want to preach. They'll want to sing. Little girls say, I want to I wanna be like, uh, you wouldn't believe at camp. My wife, Kelly's in charge of the teenage girls, and they'll, they'll look at her, and they'll just look at her, and they'll say, how do you, how do, you do your makeup? How do you get your hair curl like that? How do, and they start, they start picking it up. You know why? Kids are impressionable. Kids are impressionable. Kids are impressionable. I seen, I seen a little girl at the flea market one day, and they're subconsciously doing what they've been around all week. Family was walking through the flea market. This little girl, she's about 10 or 11 years old, and, and the family was walking, and they was looking at stuff like this, and I was sort of behind them, and this little girl was going, and chanting a cheer, and she's going, And she didn't know she's doing it. She was looking at socks and boots and cell phone covers and going like, it's she's programmed. Their mind had been programmed. She'd been at ball games all week long. I'm telling you, kids are very impressionable. I see them come to the gym all the time. They'll come in and they'll have a Curry shirt on. St Stephen Curry, number 30. That was my number in high school, and, and he watched me all the time on film, and, and that's why he chose that number. That's true, not the last part, uh, but it was my number. But anyway, and, and they'll have curry on their back, and I'll see them little boys over there. They'll be going like this. 
you know, going like this, trying to, uh, trying to even shoot like him. And his shot don't even go right. Uh, but it goes in. I ain't fussing. Uh, but it, his shot don't even look. And you know what? They imitate. When I was growing up, Lord have mercy, I watched, I watched them guys play ball. And I used to watch Pistol Pete. And he could do stuff for the basketball. Probably nobody, probably still ain't nobody done so. He's one that invented all this showboat stuff. And he'd come around there and he'd come. And we would go straight outside and try to do everything they did. Now, people, that puts a big responsibility on you parents. If you let them sit around and watch movies with violence, sexual contact, what do you think they're going to want to do? I get so aggravated when these, these, you hear these guys on TV and they say, well, there's no evidence, there's no scientific evidence that the music they listen to has any influence on their behavior. Well, there may not be scientific evidence, but there's a lot of common sense evidence that proves it does. If TV don't have an influence on kids, tell me why they won't let them advertise cigarettes. You know they won't let them advertise cigarettes on TV? And they say, because kids will see that and they'll want to smoke. And then they advertise liquor. Listen, I'm not for, I'm not for al- uh, uh, tobacco. I don't think nobody ought to smoke. But alcohol, 10 million times worse. And you don't think that will influence your child? You don't think that the, the things they do, you don't think football players, their morals, musicians, and movie stars, you don't think, well, I had one, won't call no names, uh, that went just this week. It was Jesus' way maker, 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 and then come home after being gone for a while and come home with a knife going chop, 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 chop. I ain't naming no names. But that's a wicked video on there where you take a shot of whiskey and get about half drunk and then try to chop your fingers off. So you want to say Jesus is a way maker? Or chop, 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 chop. And you know what y'all's parents, you know what your problem is? You parents, and I'm going to get to this again in a minute, but you know what my mom always said? Said people don't want to fool with their kids. That's the problem with a lot of them. People don't want to fool with them. I'm Russell Westbrook. You know, I'm, I'm LeBron James. I'm this, I'm that. Dress. Habits. You know why the guy wants to... It could not be comfortable to wear the seat of your pants right here. There's no... I've seen a guy one day, and he's walking around holding his pants like this to keep them from falling down. And the, his belt was right here, right there. And that, they, that ain't comfortable. And it sure don't look nice. You know why he's doing that? Because somebody else did it. Because somebody else did it. Because somebody else did it. And they did it in prison. That's where that started. With the homosexuals in prison. And ladies and gentlemen, you, you know what kids are? They're impressionable. They're impressionable. They're impressionable. Kids are impressionable. Why do you think the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go? You have to train them. They are not naturally good. They are not naturally inclined to do right. Every child is born in rebellion. Every child is born with their will going the wrong way. We are born in sin, shaping in iniquity. Our heart's going the wrong way. You have to be trained to do the right thing. You know why? Because it's natural to do the wrong thing. I will say, kids are impressionable. So you take them to revivals. Have them around church. Not just church, a good church. I don't care if you have to drive 50 miles. I don't care if you have to drive 100 miles. Get them where there's real preaching and real singing and real God. It's worth it to get your kids in that atmosphere. They're going to imitate what they see. Number two, kids are manageable. I said first they're impressionable. Second, they're manageable. The problem is, here's what's going wrong. Women used to stay home take care of their kids and raise their kids, and teach their kids. Now, you have a house payment, you have a car payment, you have another pay, you have credit card bills, you have so many bills to try to have stuff so that you'll feel like you're just as good as the other people and neighbors and try to impress them that the mama has to get a job, daddy has to get a job, daddy has to get a second job, mama has to get another job, and the kids are just left to the babysitter or just to the TV or just to, some, or, or to the school system to raise your, your family. 
Mom, my mom used to set us down. I'll never forget it. I couldn't have been three, four years old because it was when we lived in Clinchfield and we moved. I think we moved to Nebo when I was five or six. I think I was six. And uh, my mom was sitting on my mom's lap and she'd put me and my two sisters in a big chair and open a big old Bible story book and read us Bible stories. You know what women say now? I ain't got time for that. I don't have time for that. But I believe today, I believe I am saved and in the ministry today because of the, the God mom, my mom put in me when I was a little child. She put the fear of God in me. She taught me right. And when I was out in sin, the worst thing I ever did, I still down in deep inside said, there's a God, there's a God, I know there's a God, there's a heaven, there's a hell. And I got saved, brother, when I was 18 years old. And that's why the Bible said, train up a child in the way should go. Proverbs 22, 6. Proverbs 22, 6. Uh, uh, they need to know the Bible. They need Kids Kids are growing up. They're going to believe whatever you tell them. That's why you better make sure you're telling them right. Kid one day come, to, come in one day and he's, he's starting to have questions. He said, Mama, where did the human race even come from? Where did people come from? She said, Son, there was a first man, Adam and Eve, and, and man and woman, and they had kids, 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 on down to me and your daddy, and we had you. That's where we come from. So he said, okay. He went in and asked his daddy. He said, daddy, where did the human race come from? He said, how did we get here? Daddy said, well, son, millions of years ago, uh, there was a huge explosion, the evolution came, and tadpoles gradually evolved into monkeys and orangutans and baboons and then men, and now, and now we walk around, and, and we come from monkeys. He said, oh. Kid went back in and told his mama. She said, he said, mama, daddy said that we all used to be monkeys and that we come from little monkeys. And you said we come from Adam and Eve. What's, what's the real truth? She said, oh, son, I was telling you about my side of the family. Daddy was telling you about his side of the family. <laughs> and that's true. Amen. Maybe. Yeah. But you know what? That kid soaked that up. He, he's impressionable. He's impressionable. He's impressionable. I challenge every mother here tonight, today, and I don't care if your kids are 15, 16, 17, I don't care how old they are, take some time, set them down, talk to them about the Lord. You say, well, I, I don't feel comfortable. To, get comfortable doing it. Pray till you get a burden for your own children. Listen, if you don't train that child right, and you let him or her watch anything they want to watch. Don't come in here crying to me when they come home drunk or they get on drugs. And I'll say, Brother Danny, I just don't know what it is. I'm telling you now. I'm warning you now. They are whatever you put in them. Plus a mixture of their own personality. They're manageable. They're manageable. Sometimes it ain't easy. Some kids are hard to manage. But you know what they need? Just some time put into them. They need a spanking. Every kid needs a spanking. Ain't never been a kid on the planet that didn't need a spanking. Let me tell you what I quoted my wife the other day. She says, these kids do this, these kids do that. What do you do with them? I said, here's what the Bible says. If you believe the Bible, and I do, the Bible is 90,000 miles ahead of the latest book on rearing children. And the Lord said, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction, that's a hickory switch, Shall drive it far from thee. Now, here's what we say. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but if you put him in the right environment, it'll drive it far from him. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but if you'll get him in counseling, it'll drive it far from him. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but if you'll talk to him and give him nice things, it'll, be, it'll drive it far from him. That ain't what he says. It don't say foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but if you take it to church regular, it'll drive it far from him. It says the rod of correction. What it says. You know what my mom said? She said, I'll strap them little legs with a hickory switch. She wasn't a child abuser. Anybody that's mean to a kid ought to be put in jail. She took a hickory switch about as big as that right there and went, whoosh, whoosh. oh, man, that would hurt. You would straighten up right quick. And I want to tell you what's wrong with some of you little brats in here this morning. Your poor mama or your poor daddy don't have enough faith in the Bible to believe that what God said was right and what God said will work. I'm not talking about being mean. I'm not talking about hitting a kid. I'm not talking about uh, putting bruises on. I'm not talking about child abuse. I'm talking about biblical discipline will drive it far from them. They're manageable. Number three, 
kids are salvageable. Kids are salvageable. Amen? Any kid can be saved. You say, not mine, they're crazy. Well, maybe they are. Wonder where they got it. Any kid can be helped. Any kid can be saved. You know why I believe in pre... You know why we run buses? You know why I believe in running up and down the road and, and bringing kids to church? Because I believe in my heart that if you'll get them, like the Bible says, before unbelief gets in and before they start questioning God, if you'll get them before education ruins them, higher education will ruin your child's faith in the Bible. When they go to college and most stuff in high school, not all of it, thank God we got some good, but higher education is designed to take your kid's faith out of the Bible and put it in a world philosophy where all religions are the same and everything, everybody's tolerant of everything. That's what education is designed to do, teach them to live and get along with each other in this world. The, if you get them before education, they say that about 75% of Christian kids that go to a secular college lose their faith. Thank God some make it through. Some of you made it through. Praise God. You ought to thank God for your mother. And I'm telling you this morning, if you don't have a good godly heritage and your feet on the ground, education will take every bit of faith you've got. They'll put that there and say, we come millions of years ago, there was no man on earth. No, they sure wasn't because there wasn't no earth. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, they'll have you doubting everything in the Word of God. They'll have you doubting everything before education gets them. And I'll tell you something else. you got to get them before unbelief gets in. you got to get them before education gets them. And I'll tell you another thing. You've got to get it in their heart before sin gets in their life. Because sin hardens people. And the more people sin, the less faith you have in God. The Bible said we can be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Let me tell you this. No matter, if you keep sinning, you have, the more you sin, the less faith you have. It makes you lose your faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The more you sin, the more you shy away from the Bible, the less your faith is, and your faith gets less and less. And I've, I've known some of them 12, 13, 14 years old that are hard as a rock, and nobody can do anything with them because they've done sin so much. They've already lost their virginity. They've already been high. They've already tried alcohol and drugs at 13, 12, and 14, and 15 years old. A bad shape to be in. Little boy yesterday on bus route with me and Brother Derek was visiting. Little boy named Jeremiah. He's about that high. I think he said he's seven years old. And when we go down there, every time he comes running up to me and he's got his bicycle and he comes running up to me and he said, I can show you where the kids live. I said, good, man, let's go. He said, now, so-and-so lives up here on this. There are like 100 apartments down there in that one complex down there at, at, off, off 321. And he took us here and took us there, and he wouldn't give out tracts. And I said, Jeremiah, that's your name? He said, yeah. I said, that, you're in the Bible. I said, Jeremiah was one of the great prophets. And, I, and you know what I was trying to do? Put some God in that little guy's heart. And I told him, I said, Lord, use that little boy. There's no telling what kind of preacher that little boy could be if somebody would take that kid to church. It's a shame. It's a shame they're out there by the hundred and churches. I'll tell you what Ronnie the bus man told me. Down in South Carolina. He said he put out an advertisement. And he put this advertisement out. And he said... Uh, uh, on this advertisement, he said, I will buy a bus. I will pay the insurance for any of you churches that want to do it. And all you got to do is get somebody to drive it on Sunday. He said, not one church. Not one church. Not one church. I'm going to play this for you now. Just a minute. He said, not one church responded. I want to say a couple things here and I'm done. No kid, no kid, no child, not mine, not yours, none of them. No child should ever have unfiltered, unmonitored, unsupervised access to the Internet. 
Never. I'll say that again. No child should ever have an unsupervised, unlimited access to the Internet. There is not a kid in this world who's not curious. You know, when something pops up they shouldn't see, they're going to click on it. You know what I could do? I'm not preaching on that this morning. But the truth is, no adult should have unsupervised access to the Internet. Amen. You know what some of y'all been looking at. Would, would y'all care if I looked at seen everything you had looked at this week? I guarantee some of you people die of a heart attack. No adult, me, you. My, my wife can see my phone anytime she wants to. You know why? You, you need somebody to keep check on you. Don't sit there and act, well, I'm, I've got it all under control. You're a wicked sinner, and without the help and grace of God, you'd be in all kinds of sin. We're all that way. Something in us responds to sin. And you look at one, and then you say, that brings up another one, and you look at another one, and that brings up the first thing you know, you're in the cesspool. I heard a Christmas story way back in the 1910, 15, when uh, the times were hard. Mother died, had six kids. They was bad in debt. It's a preacher told this story. And Daddy set all the kids down at Christmas time. And he said, y'all, I'm going to tell you, we can't expect nothing for Christmas this year. I'm barely paying the bills. I don't make enough money to buy. And they said, we just be thankful that God sent his son and, and be the Savior of the world. And, and we're going to be thankful for what God done for us. They said, we accepted that. And they said Christmas got a little closer. It was cold, snowing. and When they got real close, they, put their, they went ahead and put their stockings on the mantle up there, you know, just so they'd have something to look at. Their daddy got out that night in the cold on Christmas Eve when they all went to sleep. And he went down and got the man that run the local store, got him up and got him. And he said, please, if you just come getting some fruit and oranges and stuff, and, and let me charge, pay you when I can. And that owner of the store went and Oak got in his store. He got some apples and oranges and a little bit of candy. And he brought it back and stuffed it in their stockings so his kids would have something for Christmas. And he said his daddy stood firm. And he said there's no way I could express the reverence and respect we had for my daddy in that home. He was a godly man. He lived right. He lived what he preached. He knew God. He said, he, that preacher said, he said, when I got sick one time, he'd hold my head where I could throw up and then got me a rag and helped clean it up. And he said, my daddy was a man of God. And that man grew up to become a great evangelist. His, his brother was a great evangelist. And then people grew up right. But that wasn't because of material things. That wasn't because they got him a new four-wheeler. They got an orange and an apple. And if you can get them four-wheeler, praise God, go for it. No, I ain't against that. I'm just saying... We got this idea that give them stuff, 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 stuff. That ain't the way it goes, folks. You get God on you and give them God. I'm going to ask you to get a burden this morning, not just for your kids, but for all of them. Jimmy, you can go ahead and I'll let you hear this song. Won't you please come and get me, Mr. Busman? These are kids that come to our church. Every kid you see here comes to our church every Sunday. Every Sunday. May God help us. May God help us to get a burden for our kids. Thank God for our bus workers. Here they are. Change my life Now is that 
Mr. Busman strolls along just talking with Abraham and John. A young man comes running and he falls to his knees with rejoicing. They all hear him cry. Listen I'm so glad, I'm glad. you came to get me, Mr. Busman. Just dim up here, Jim, just a couple of us, you don't mind. We're going to let you hear this song again, and this will be our invitation this morning. That's fine, thank you. And I want you to just a sad have a pray today. Boy sits alone. And ask the Lord what He'd have you to do. Just need bus drivers, need bus workers. You know what Mom said? Somebody just needs to fool them. It's I'm a firm believer in that. Just somebody willing to fool with them. Would you put a little time into some kids? It may not seem like a lot to you. Just give them a tootsie roll. Or just do something for your kids, your own kids, your grandkids. Be a prayer warrior. Let's just get in this altar and pray a minute before we go this morning. If you need to come, 
every person in here today who's here on a bus or because of a bus. I want you to stand up, please. If you're here on the bus or because of a bus, and there's a bunch of them back down in the junior church. I want you to look at that. I want you to look at that. And there's a bunch. All the kids are back in junior church this morning. The rest of you stand, please. Get in this altar this morning. You say, Brother Danny, I'll, I'll get my bus license. I can help drive once in a while. I can, I can go on the bus route once a month. Surely I can help junior church. Brother Brian's back there this morning. He needs help this morning. He needs help this morning. Some of you ladies got a good personality. You know how to work with kids. You can get involved. Amen. I can't think of a better thing you can do than put your put your emphasis in a child and train them up the way they should go. You do that this morning. I'm so glad you come to get me, Mr. Buster. I really hope you yep. I hope you come again. And they mean that too. They want to know who Jesus is. They want to know Jesus. I'm they telling you, that little boy down yonder in Hickory, he followed us all over that Mr. place yesterday. Man, they want to know who Jesus is. They have a hunger for God. I'll say it again. Are you willing to fool John. with him? People just don't want to fool with him. A young man Amen. comes running. Amen. And he falls yes. to his knees. Bus workers, with rejoicing, don't lose your burden. They all hear him. Don't lose your burden for him. So Man, I got a burden for him. That's why we're willing Mr. to spend Bus money, Man, spend time. I don't know anything better you can do. The blessed Amen. one who died for me. Amen. Amen. I'm Amen. glad that I was born again. Amen. Thanks for telling Dad of his sin. And here he is. He'd like to thank you somehow. Amen. ask you a question this morning. You got some kids or you got some grandkids or somebody in your life has kids. I'm going to tell you right now, I've, I don't think I've ever had a heavier burden for kids than I've got the last few. All this child trafficking stuff and sell them into, for slaves. I mean, two and three and five years old, y'all. It about turn your stomach. I'm talking about tens of thousands of kids. Go to Walmart and look on that board, just the ones around here that's disappeared. You don't know. Them trucks going up down the interstate right now. You don't know what's in the back of them trucks anymore. They're trafficking them, selling them like dogs and cattle. I'm telling you, if that don't get a hold of you, there's something wrong with you. You're, you're in bad shape. You're in bad shape if that don't touch your heart. You say, well, what can we do about it? i tell you what we can do about it. We can do what we're doing. This right here is the answer. And I believe it. I believe this right here is the answer. And I believe they need Jesus, don't you? They need Jesus. They need to know somebody loves them. Now, uh, we're going we're gonna to let you go. Come on up here, uh, Miss Ava. She's going to bring that baby up and dedicate it. That's the way to start them off when they're that young. If you wait much longer than this, ain't no hope for them. That's a begging coming there right there, buddy. That's a begging. While they're coming, that's a begging right there, buddy. How much does she weigh now? She up two, three pounds each. Oh, she's up to eight. Good night. Done got fat. Look at it. It was only, she was only what? Five when she was born. That's, I think that's what I was. I was six. I was a big old baby. But anyway, before we pray and dedicate this young lady to the Lord, just don't save them. You know, we're not Catholics. We don't sprinkle them and Make them a part of the church when they don't know what they're doing. Uh, it's it's not a it's not a it doesn't have anything to do with salvation. It's a dedication that the parents are giving this child to the Lord to use however he sees fit. I want to say this, and I'll let you go. Um, we're we're raising money for our bus kids, and my my first goal my goal is to raise a thousand dollars. If we have a hundred kids, we can buy them a gift for ten dollars. You can get a nice gift for ten dollars. And I got some other, last year we got, was able to give away one brand new bicycle on each bus. We have enough, we'll do that. And I always want to give the first $100 and somebody doesn't beat me to it. So it's Christmas time. If you want to do something for somebody else, go back there and look at them kids before you leave this morning. I'm asking anybody that will, 
You give $100 between now and the last week. On December 24th, Christmas Eve, we're going to have a huge service in here. Fill this whole place full of presents and gifts and give them gifts that morning. Parents, everybody who rides the bus and see a bunch of people get saved. And that's what it's all about. So any, anybody who will give $100 between now and the next three weeks, I know it's Christmas. If you can't, you can't. But many of you can, and that's who I'm talking to, if you can. If you can't, don't, don't feel guilty. But if you can, you can. And so we're going to try to raise 1000 bucks. Somebody's already beat me to it, but I'm putting my $100 in uh, next week, Lord willing, and we're going to try to raise. Even cut our own back a little bit. Uh-oh, she's done pitching a fit on me. Uh, sorry about that. Didn't mean to take that long. What's her name? Alicia. 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 I don't know how to say that. Alicia. Al Alicia. Al like we say Alicia? Okay, all right, Alicia. <laughs> I ain't Spanish much on my accent, I'm, but thank God for this little girl. And her daddy, Hector, is now going to sing a song. <laughs> He's going to sing Jingle Bells, right? No, he, <laughs> I kid him all the time about wanting to say it. He don't want to sing. I praise God for this couple. They love the Lord. They love our church. They love bus kids. And now the Lord's blessed them with one. Amen. So let's pray for this little girl. Heavenly Father, I thank you for little Alicia. I pray that your hand will be upon this little girl all the days of her life. I pray for her parents that you would bless them, supply every need they have. And as soon as she's old enough to hear your voice, call her to yourself, Lord, and let her respond. And we give this child to you to use, protect from the wickedness of this world. And thank you for what you're going to do in her life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give her a big hand this morning. Woo! Amen. All right. Okay. All right. We're going to go now. Boy, I've done got a burden more for the bus kids now, y'all. I wish it's Saturday morning. Uh, Saturday morning, 930. Uh, if you want to help, we need help. Uh, we'll have our couples trip. So me and my wife will be gone Saturday morning. But we're always here at 930 Saturday morning. If you want to help, come and we'll put you to work. You don't have to know nothing or where to go or nothing. Just be here. All right, let's, let's bow our head and be dismissed. Uh, Jeremy, you dismiss us. Now, at 6 o'clock this evening, come back, and I'm going to help you save some money. Uh, we've got a Bible message. All right, let's pray.